Hello, welcome to another video. I hope that you're doing well. In this video, we are going to be taking a look at the English Paper 2 reading, Variant 2 1, and this one is from October, November 2019. Okay, let's get started. Probably familiar with this paper and how it's, uh, how it's set up, so the format. We have two passages that we will need to read and then answer questions regarding each passage. And the way that I will do it in this video is first, we will start by reading the first passage and before we answer the questions, okay? And for the second passage, we'll alternate from reading the text and answering questions as we go. So first, what I do is I like to take a look at the questions that I will need to answer before I go ahead and read the passage. So question 1a regarding to passage 1, which is entitled Silk. Question 1a is identify and describe the rise and spread of silk in former times and the reasons why silk is valued in, more, in modern times as outlined in the passage. And at this stage, you do not need to use your own words. You could use note form, up to 12 marks for the content points. Okay, so that's 1A. While I'm reading, I'm going to be keeping in mind that I need to underline everything that's in relation to rise and spread of silk in former time. And silk is a fabric, right? It's material. And in red, we'll keep in mind anything that has to do with the reasons why silk is valued in modern times, so today. Now let's take a look at what B is asking. Okay, B is asking to use the notes from A to write a summary of the rise and spread of silk in former times and the reasons why silk is valued in modern times. So B is just a continuation, kind of, of A, where you will need the, you will need the content from question A to answer B, and B is just taking everything that you wrote in point form from question A and to write it as a nice and fo formal and flowy summary. Okay, now, Last question that has to do with passage one is question two. Reread paragraph one and give three opinions from the paragraph. And in our case, we're going to look for three opinions as we read. If you find them, that's great. If not, then yes, we can come back and reread, but it saves time to just try to spot them in blue while you're reading. The first time okay let's go ahead with our text silk and here I'll just also write down in the respective colors which I forgot to do what we are looking for so you don't have to go back and forth from the question okay so in green we have Rise plus spread of silk. Former times. Okay, so that's in green. In red, we have why silk is valued today Oop, too close sorry about that is valued today that's in red and in blue we have paragraph one so paragraph one three opinions okay Hopefully you can read that correctly. 
but while you're going through the exam it's a good idea to actually just write down in the respective colors what you're looking for okay so let's go ahead with the reading <coughs> excuse me okay Silk is an exceptionally beautiful material that silkworms produce when they are making their cocoons. Let me just try to zoom in here for you. Here we better. There we go. Everything's a little bit better. Sorry, bear with me for just two seconds. Okay, I think now we're good. All right, from the beginning again, silk is an exceptionally beautiful material that silkworms produce when they are making their cocoons. And right there, I spotted an opinion. Silk is an, is an exceptionally beautiful material. Maybe some people in the world don't like, don't like silk. So opinion right there. Legend gives credit for the, disco the discovery of silk to Lezu, a Chinese empress who, having seen a cocoon fall into her tea, watched it unravel and realized the cocoon was made from a long thread, both soft and strong, that came to be known as silk. There soon followed, perhaps by the same empress, the invention of silk reels and the silk looms which made the silk threads and enabled them to be spun into fabric. It would be fascinating to know if the legend is true, but what is certainly known is that silk became a valued commodity reserved for clothing for emperors or as gifts to be given to his court guests. Okay, so here just to make sure you're following well, what we see is the introduction of silk, and then right after we are told that legend, so it is, it is said that the first person to have discovered silk is a Chinese empress named Lai Zhu, and she was having tea and a cocoon from a silkworm, a cocoon fell into her tea, and I guess she took it out and she examined the cocoon and she saw that it was made from a long thread both soft and strong so I guess she had the idea to be like oh why don't I take this and we just collect a bunch of them and make clothes out of them and stuff like that right so from there that's how silk came to be known and here we see that eventually there was the invention of silk reels and silk looms that makes it possible to produce silk threads and also to combine those silk threads and make them become fabric okay and then here where we're at is it would be fascinating to know if the le legend is true but we do know that silk became a valued commo commodity for emperors, so all the very, very rich, high status people of the time. And they used the silk for, for themselves as clothes and also gave it as gifts to their guests. Okay, and then now let's go on with the reading. Obviously, all visitors to the royal court who were given gifts of silk would be entranced by its exclusive exclusivity okay and trans mean meaning they would be so odd and just so like wow this is great right very impressed through time sericulture sericulture is also um, it has to do with silk so the production of silk the manufacture of silk right spread so yes sericulture is the manufacture of silk Okay. so it spread so that ordinary people were allowed to wear it so it wasn't only emperors anymore now ordinary people can now wear it the use of silk was not confined to clothing it had many other diverse uses in manufacturing processes such as for paper fishing lines and bows 
for musical instruments. At one point, it was considered so valued that it was even used as money in some Chinese dynasties. The Chinese managed to keep silk making methods a secret for about a thousand years. Its manufacture was, was shrouded in myths and smuggling silkworms out of China was punishable by death. That's pretty insane. That's crazy anyway. <laughs> However, some smugglers were successful and the secret spread quickly to other parts of the world, such as Korea, Egypt, India, the Middle East, and eventually Europe. Early evidence of long distance silk trade was the discovery of silk in a 3,000 year old Egyptian mummy, and an ancient religious text describes how silk was used in purification ceremonies following an outbreak of disease such as leprosy. Although many other goods, such as gold and jade, were also exchanged, through time, the trade of silk became so extensive that the major trade route between Asia and Europe actually became known as the Silk Road. Silk continues to be valued to be a valued commodity in modern times. It takes dye well and can be made in brilliant luminous colors. Silk has a smooth soft texture, texture and because it is neither stiff nor limp, it hangs well and is ideal for elegant clothing. This elegance is enhanced by the attractive shimmering appearance of silk caused by its structure, which allows it to reflect light at different angles. It blends well with fibers such as wool, camel hair, or cotton, and can also be combined with other fibers to produce. For example, chiffon, crepe de chine, crepe de chine and taffeta. As it is absorbent, Silk is comfortable to wear in hot climates. However, because it does not easily conduct heat, it keeps warm air close to the skin during cold weather, making it suitable for all temperatures. Silk is also excellent in the manufacturing of clothing to protect wearers against bites from insects such as mosquitoes and horseflies. Wool and cotton are made of short lengths of fiber woven together. By comparison, silk is made from long continuous fibers, which can bend or stretch without breaking, making it very strong. This strength is particularly valuable in the manufacture of equipment such as parachutes, medical stitches, and other life-saving devices used by emergency services. The durability of silk was shown when a sunken ship was brought to the sea's surface after being submerged by many years. Silk clothing on board was intact, whereas the crew's uniforms made of wool and cotton had disappeared without trace. Silk is sometimes worn today to show status or professional standing in the legal profession in many parts of the world for example top ranking lawyers wear silk gowns the manufacture of silk also has its critics who argue that because harvesting silkworm cocoons involves the killing of lar of larva sericulture is cruel Mahatma Gandhi was critical of the was critical of silk making 
and advocated the production of other fabrics, notably cotton. Nevertheless, the demand of silk continues. The rearing of silkworms, oops, I don't know, you guys couldn't see, sorry. The rearing of silkworms and the reeling of silk are labor intensive processes that are reflected in the price, meaning that many people will always be anxious to own silk as an exclusive symbol of wealth. Okay, so there we have it, the text. And you see, I noticed this pattern with paper two. You always have, the information is pretty organized. So you'll notice that the first, the first half somewhat, right? The top part is all green and then you have the other information at the bottom. So I haven't yet seen papers where they mix things, but it, it may happen, but right now that's what I've noticed. So that's also a, a tactic that you can use to know if you're, uh, if you're on the right track. So if you were to choose a, a color like I do, and you see that you highlighted green here, and then later on you highlighted some green, it, it may not be correct, but, Anyway, so the first top part of the text, we talked about the rise and the spread of silkworms, uh, silkworms and silk. And the, so quick resume, the Empress of China is apparently the person who discovered silk. And then they started making, they figured out a way how to take uh, silk threads and make them into fabric. And then from there, it became more popular and regular people, right, were able to wear it. And then from there, it moved on from being mostly clothing to many other things contained silk, like paper, fishing lines. It was used for other stuff, okay? And it was even used as currency, so as money in some Chinese dynasties. And then we see here the smuggling, so it was majorly in China, and they wanted to keep this a secret, the silk a secret, and people were punished by death if they tried to take the silk outside of China. But smugglers were successful, and they found a way to get the silk, the silkworms, to other countries, notably these ones here, Middle East, Egypt, Korea, okay? And... Silk became actually, the trade of silk became very popular that the route between Asia and Europe became known as the Silk Road, which is pretty funny. And then moving on to today, we saw the reasons why people really like silk. It's because it takes dye well. There's so many, all these things that are underlined in red showcases why today silk is still in high demand. Okay, so it's good for all temperatures. It, you can have it in really nice colors. It hangs well and it has a soft texture. So it gives you that feeling of elegance when you wear it and of luxury, right? And it also protects against mosquito and horseflies bites, okay? And it's also very strong and it's uh, malleable so you can use it in many different ways and it doesn't break unlike cotton and wool and it also shows status professional standing and the labor the labor to, that is needed to manufacture silk is so intense so there's a high price and just how the human mind and human race works is that the more something is expensive the more people want it because then they can buy it and show off and be like hey look i could afford this so that's why i'm better than you right so yes another reason that's pointed out here why people love silk is because it's expensive <laughs> okay so with that being said let's go to our question 1a 
okay, which is asking us to identify and describe everything that we just read and discussed just a few seconds ago. Okay, so we will start with the rise and spread of silk in former times. So that is everything that was in green, okay? Everything in green. So here, let's go ahead. And remember, for this question, there is 12 marks that are allocated to the, entire, the whole section A. So here I would recommend to have six bullet points here and then six bullet points here just to make sure you get all your points. And then you can, if you have more, you can, you can um, add more. But just to be time, con uh, to just to keep time in your head, you may not just want to put too much, right? Just take into consideration that there's 12 marks and it's one, most, one mark per uh, good, good remark, good point. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead. So here they have the first one for us. Lezu saw a cocoon made from a long thread, both soft and strong. So it means that we are going to mention something else. Here. So they mentioned this already. And then next point that we have is there soon came the invention of silk reels and silk looms, which made silk threads, oh, to make silk threads and enable them to be spun into fabric. Okay. So here, I'll write that down. The invention, I need to stop hitting the camera. The invention of silk Sorry, so messy this video. I just have to raise this up a little bit so I stop hitting it when I write. Okay, I think we're okay now. The invention of silk reels silk looms to make silk threads and spin into fabric. Okay. Need to change marker. This one is running out of ink. So that's our first point. Okay. And then next thing that we have is so the rise and the spread, right? So the spread was that we have the machines to make the silk and turn them into silk threads and turn them into fabric and then again regarding the rise and the spread silk became a valued commodity reserved for clothing for emperors okay so it became there's high demand for silk so here Commodity reserved for clothing so here by M I mean emperors okay Next point, we have
So through time, Sari culture spread so that the ordinary people were allowed to wear it, okay? So it wasn't no longer just for rich people and emperors or kings and stuff. Ordinary people were allowed, had access to the silk. So through time... Okay. okay, so that makes three, four, next point. So ordinary people have access to silk. And then next thing is that silk was no longer confined to clothing. It had other, other uses in manufacturing processes. Okay, so oops, uses, excuse my horrible writing had other uses in manufacturing processes. Just trying to leave room here. So silk threads had many other uses in manufacturing processes. Okay, so that is, and then our fifth point. used as money in some Chinese dynasties, okay? In some Chinese Dynasties. Okay, so that is one, two, three, four, five. Sixth point. Some smugglers were successful, and the secret spread quickly to other parts of the world. Okay, so the smuggling of silk eventually was successful. So other countries in the world had access to silk. Okay, so here. Silkworms, silk was, oh, rather say were, were smuggled to other countries, S, K, to other countries, okay? So silkworms, silk, were smuggled to other countries, okay? And then this is seven, if you have the time and the room, We have, here I, I skipped this part here because this is just history, okay? It's not really the rise. Um, but here we have silk became so extensive 
that the major trade route between Asia and Europe actually became known as the Silk Road. So just to keep it short, I will say the trade of silk became so extensive that the major trade route between Asia and Europe. was called Silk Road. This is long. Maybe you could leave this one out, but it's long. Okay, so here are all of the good notes that could be written down and highlighted about the rise and the spread of silk in former times, okay? And remember here, the reason why I did not include this information, even though I underlined it, the information about the Egyptian mummy being found with silk, as well as uh, being silk being mentioned in religious text, is because these are just facts, okay? It's information, but it's just information. It's not really saying anything very specific in regards of the rise, so... Uh, you know, the evolution of the silk industry as well as the spread of silk. These points here are just, so the mummy and the religious text, these two points are really just giving us information about where silk was found in much, much, much older times, okay? Let's move on to the second part of the question A. So reasons why silk is valued in modern times, okay? And this one is pretty, we saw this in the second half of the text. Everything in red here is good information, okay? So let's go in with that. They also gave us a first point here, takes dye well and can be made in brilliant, luminous colors. So what can we say that comes next? Because this point is already written down. So now let's move on to the second one. Silk has a smooth, soft texture and because it is neither stiff nor limp, it hangs well and is ideal for elegant clothing. Many way you can express that, you can literally just copy down the whole sentence. You could also just use a, a section by saying it's smooth, soft, hangs well, and ideal for elegant clothing. You choose, but I think that they're pretty lenient. The markers are lenient with the answer, so it's up to you. But this is what I will say. Smooth soft, uh, soft, neither stiff nor limp, hangs well, so it is Oops, it is, excuse me, it is ideal for 
elegant clothing. I am so sorry for the horrible writing. My marker here is running out of ink. Elegant clothing, he said. Okay. Second point, let's take a look. The elegance is enhanced by the attractive shimmering appearance of silk. I think this also goes with the elegance, so we can, the elegant clothing part, so maybe you can skip that or you can write it down, but actually I'll just skip it because we have much more other options. So more diversity I think is better. Here, next point, we have it blends well with fibers such as wool, camel hair, or cotton, and can also be combined with other fibers. So I think this is the main point here. It can be combined with other fi fibers. It can be blended slash combined. with other fibers okay next point it is suitable for all temperatures okay very straightforward and short which i love i wish all of them were like that <laughs> Uh, where is that? Okay, yes, yeah, so suitable for all temperatures. Okay. Silk is also excellent in the manufacturing of clothing to protect wearers against bites of insects such as mosquitoes and horseflies. Okay. How can I put this? Just go the long way. So excellent in manufacturing of clothing to protect wearers from insects Bites. Cool. Let's move on. Silk is made from long continuous fibers which can bend and stretch without breaking. Okay, so it is strong. Here I will write down can bend. Stretch without breaking. Cool. Next thing, silk is sometimes worn today to show status or professional standing. Shows. That is Oh, my writing is so bad. Professional standing. Okay. And then last thing that I'll squeeze in here. It's our last point about it being expensive. 
and people like expensive things because when they can have the expensive thing, other people know that it is expensive and they find them cool. So it is a sign of wealth. Okay. Sign of wealth because it is expensive. All right, so here we have a very full answer for our 1A, okay? And 1B, I, just like in the other, in the other paper two videos, I will be skipping 1B. 1B is asking you to write a summary, okay? Based on these points here. So the bulk of the job has been done all the points are here and now you just have to take all of these points and make them flow okay and the trick to do that is just to use good transition words uh, like furthermore additionally none the nonetheless so all of those transition words that get you from one sentence to another smoothly that's what you will need to do here okay I think that, and I really do believe that you can do this, but if you have any questions, please leave a comment down below and I'll take that into consideration. If you really are struggling with this and you actually want me to go and write this in detail, uh, let me know and then I'll, I can show you what it looks like when I, I do it, if I write the summary, okay? But I think that this one, definitely believe in your capabilities to get it done, okay? So the summary, 150 to 180 words, that's something you have to make sure you respect. Use your old words as well, right? For part A, we were using, sometimes we just copy and paste from the text itself, but in part B, it does ask for you to use your own words. Oh, this marker is making me sad. Use your own words, okay? So that's important. Let's move on to question two. Reread paragraph one and give three opinions from the paragraph. But if you do it like we did in this video, you already have all the answers. So there's no need to reread because you already thought of that up here. Paragraph one, three opinions. Well, you read it the first time. First opinion is silk is an exceptionally beautiful material that silkworms produce. Okay, you can basically just stop here at beautiful material. Some people don't like silk and actually some people are allergic to silk. So not everybody thinks silk is great. So that is definitely an opinion and we will write this down. Silk is an exceptionally beautiful material, okay? That's our first opinion there. Our second opinion is when the writer mentions that legend has it that the empress was the one who first discovered silk when it, a cocoon fell into her tea and then the writer says it would be fascinating to know if the legend is true or not okay but what we do know for sure is that silk became a valued commodity but when the writer says this, it would be fascinating to know if the legend is true. That's definitely an opinion because maybe you, for example, maybe you don't really care to know if it's true or not. Maybe I care or maybe I don't care to know if it was actually the Chinese empress, right? So the right, that is the writer's opinion. It's not a fact. It can't be proven that everybody would care to know, okay? So, okay. 
it would be fascinating to know if the legend is true. Okay. Third one, which I spotted very fast, obviously. So when you see the word obviously, you might instantly, I think that when you, when you see obviously, there should be that little bell in your in your head that goes off and says, hmm, this most likely will be an opinion. Obviously, all visitors of the royal court who were given gifts of silk would be entranced by its exclusivity. That's definitely an opinion because I don't think the writer was there to check and to make sure that everybody who received silk as a gift was like, ooh, I love this, right? What if the person was allergic and actually hated it, but they can't really say that they hate it because I think that when you get a gift if you don't like it you usually pretend that you do <laughs> or um, especially if it's an emperor that's giving it to you you would probably die if you said you didn't like it so um, they would probably kill you right so this is definitely an opinion that everyone that received the gift just absolutely loved it let's go ahead and write that Obviously, all visitors to the royal court who were given gifts of silk. It's a long sentence. Would be entranced by its exclusivity. Okay. There we have it. Question two. So that was actually all that there is for that's related to passage one. Okay. So remember, if you do need um, the extra help for 1B, let me know. And I shall take that into consideration for future videos. Okay, but for now, we are done with passage one and we shall move on to passage two and its questions passage two is entitled albert the lion and for passage two the way that i would like to do it to go ahead and, and analyze the passage is realize that the questions are organized in the sense that they relate to certain paragraphs so it's not a question we have question three here is related to question to paragraph one sorry i get confused with all these notations sometimes but yes question three is related to paragraph one question four is related to paragraph two question five is related to paragraph three so i think that a good idea to go about solving the remaining of the paper is to read one paragraph and answer the questions that are related to that paragraph and so on, okay? So let's go ahead. We'll start with paragraph one. And just before we read, we're just going to quickly look at the questions just to see what we're, we're looking for. The writer had to, had to start by looking after the lion what kind of animals did he expect to start with? Okay, 
the writer tells us, I plucked up my courage and displayed it. An indifference that I did not truly feel. Explain in your words what the writer did. Okay. Keep those two questions in our head while we read. I had recently achieved my dream of getting a job in a zoo. But I was shocked, but was shocked to be told I had to start by looking after a lion. Okay. I was determined to show no outward sign of uneasiness when I was given this assignment, but I did feel my boss might have let me, let me start on less dangerous animals. However, I plucked up my courage and displayed an indifference that I did not truly feel and set off through the zoo in search of my work area. Okay, so here we see that we have a person who started working at a zoo and he's happy that, or she is happy. We don't know the gender. No, we don't know the gender. So here she is happy. The person is happy that they got the job, but they were shocked when they were told that they had to look after a lion and it's because they thought that they would have started with the less dangerous animal okay and however the person says that they plucked up their courage and displayed an indifference that they did not truly feel all right let's go ahead so the writer had to start by looking after the lion. What kind of animals did he expect to start with? I remember seeing this answer in our second, second sentence. I was determined to show no outward sign of uneasiness when I was given the assignment, but I did feel my boss might have let me start on less dangerous animals. Okay, so the answer is less dangerous animals. What kind of animals did he expect to start with? Less dangerous animals. Right? If you're the type of person that likes to write full answers, you could write, he expected to start with less dangerous animals. Okay? But I just... We'll keep it short and say less dangerous animals. Very straightforward. The writer tells us, I plucked up my courage and displayed an indifference that I did not truly feel. Explain in your words what the writer did. So let's look at that in parts, right? Also remember to always take in, into consideration the amount of marks that are being awarded to your answer. So there's two and there's two major statements in this one larger statement okay we have two little statements so the first little statement is I plucked up my courage okay and then the second one is after the end it's I displayed an indifference that I did not truly feel so let's focus on the first one I plucked up my courage what does plucking up means it means you you kind of, usually when we talk about plucking, it's usually plucking hair. So if people pluck someone's eyebrows or you're, you're plucking something, or plucking a splinter out if you had a splinter. But anyway, he plucked the courage. So it means that I, I went in it and I just picked it. I picked it out. So he found courage or he, he collected the courage. He gathered the courage. Okay. So what the writer did, the writer found slash gathered based on what you prefer, or if you have any other synonyms, that's fine too, right? This is just my personal answer. The writer found gathered 
some courage. And, okay. Second little statement is, I displayed an indifference that I did not truly feel. Okay. So indifference means that you don't care. You're not bothered. You're not cold. You're not hot. You just don't care. You're indifferent. That he did not truly feel. Okay. So it means that he didn't, he pretended that he didn't care, but he really he really does care okay but the correct word to use here is he acted he acted or pretended He acted, pretended that he wasn't bothered. Okay. There you go. And you would get two marks for an answer like this. Moving on to question four. Why do you think Joe rattled a stick along the fence? What lesson did Joe want to teach the writer when he said, he may, he may look tame, but he's not. Okay. And that will be found in paragraph two. So let's go ahead with paragraph two. On arrival, I met my colleague Joe, who took me along the narrow path which led to the lion's enclosure, which was spread over three acres and was surrounded by a tall barred fence. Moving alongside the fence, Joe and I came to an area of long, lush grass bordering a pool where the lion Albert lay picturesquely under a tree. Joe rattled a stick along the fence. Albert merely gave us a withering look. He did not look fierce and wild to me, but Joe must have read my thoughts because he fixed me with an intense stare. Now you listen to me, young man, he said. He may look tame, but he's not, understand? He surveyed me to see if I had absorbed this lesson this lesson okay so what is going on here we have the writer meets his colleague Joe okay his colleague's name is Joe and they ended up going to the area where the lion was and they're describing the area it has long lush grass bordering a pool Okay, and the lion's name is Albert, and he was laying picturesquely under a tree. And Joe, so the colleague, started rattling a stick along the fence. So it means if you have the fence like this, let's pretend my fingers, my fingers are the fence, and this is the stick. He was just, you know, going like this on the fence. So it's making noise. And the lion is behind the fence somewhere here, and Joe was just going like this okay and the writer noticed that the lion the lion actually didn't even pay attention he didn't react he didn't look fierce or wild but then the writer said that Joe actually looked at him and he read his thoughts well he just knew from his body language that he was shocked like oh, okay so joe is doing this and the lion just doesn't care so he must not be that bad and that's when joe said hey listen just because he's not reacting it doesn't mean that he's actually tamed and you know he doesn't care okay so that's what we have that's going on there
Let's go back to question four. Why do you think that Joe rattled a stick along the fence? There's only one, one reason why I would think so. And that reason is obviously, if you're rattling a stick, you know there's a wild animal there, okay? And you start rubbing a stick on the fence or hitting the fence, it's obviously to get their attention or to get a reaction, okay? And that point is kind of proven later on when the writer says he merely gave us a look. Okay, he didn't, he didn't react. So what was Joe trying to do? He was trying to get the, li the lion's attention. Okay. Because, because Joe Okay, this is worth one mark too. So because Joe wanted to get the lion's attention, what lesson did Joe want to teach the writer when he said, he may look tame, but he's not? Okay, and we remember that. Joe said, hey, just because he looks tame, he's not okay. And the reason why Joe said that, what he wanted the lesson is that it's a lion, it's a wild animal, okay? Just because a wild animal is relaxing and not looking at you, it doesn't mean that they can still rip your head off, okay? So it's, it's he's still dangerous. So what lesson did Joe want to teach the writer? Joe wanted to teach the writer that, remember the, the lion's name is Albert, that Albert is a wild animal and dangerous. Okay, so there we have it. That's our answer, worth one mark. Now moving on to question five, related to paragraph three. Why did the writer soon have more time to try to learn something about lions? Okay, what two things did the writer do to try to learn something about lions? The lion is called King of Beasts. Why is this name unzoological? All right, let's go to our paragraph three. My first few days were fully occupied with memorizing the daily chores of feeding and cleaning. But this work was fairly basic, and once I had mastered it, I had more time for trying to learn something about lions. Okay, so we have our first answer actually here. Let's finish paragraph three though. Joe was amused that I carried an enormous notebook in my pocket and that I would, at the slightest provocation, provocation write down something I had noticed about Albert's behavior. There is probably no other animal in folklore that has been in, that has been endowed 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 I think yeah that has been endowed with as many imaginary virtues as the lion has. I discovered this when I decided to read all I could and see how it matched my own observations. 
ever since someone ever since someone in a moment of unzoological enthusiasm called it the king of beast writers have vied with each other to produce evidence of the lion's right to this title although notably no scientist has ever done so some writers have praised the lion for its kindness wisdom and courage i soon realized these virtues certainly did not fit albert he did not have an ounce of pity in his character on that very first morning i was walking past his enclosure Albert had concealed himself in a thick bed of grass. Suddenly and mercilessly, he jumped out against the bars with a hair-raising roar at me. He did this again on the second day, after which he squatted on his haunches and fixed me with eyes full of ferocious amusement at my panic. Okay, quite a large paragraph. Go back to our questions. Why did the writer soon have more time to try to learn something about lions? Line 16. Okay. Here we see that his first few days, or sh her first few days, okay, the writer's first few days, were fully occupied with the daily chores. Okay. But the writer says that this work was fairly basic and that the writer mastered the work very quickly, which allowed the writer to have more time for trying to learn something about lions. Okay? So, here, the way that we can formulate this, why did the writer soon have more time to try to learn something about lions? So the writer, in their own words, mastered their daily tasks quickly. quickly, their daily chores quickly, mastered it quickly, yes. So the writer mastered their daily tasks quickly. Moving on to part B, what two things did the writer try to do to learn something about lions? Okay. This was also mentioned in the paragraph. He carried a notebook, okay, in which he the, the writer says that he or she wrote down everything that they noticed about Albert's behavior. So what did the writer do? First thing, The writer wrote, wrote down everything, just looking for the word here, Okay, so the writer wrote down everything that they noticed about Albert's behavior. What is the second thing that the writer did? Okay, here I discovered this when I decided to read all I could and see how it matched my own observations. So 
the writer's own observations is what the writer wrote down but then the writer also says that they decided to read all they could okay so the writer read all they could about lions okay and here not about Albert specifically but about lions but the writer wrote down the specific behavior of Albert which is a lion but the books that the writer read was not about just Albert it's about all lions okay C the lion is called king of beast in line 21 why is this name on zoological let's take a look from line 20 ever since someone in a moment of unzoological enthusiasm called it the king of beasts writers have vied with each other to produce evidence of the lion's right to this title although so but notably no scientist has ever done so okay so writers creative people have called you know you hear lions are king of the jungle king of the beast but then here we see the but the although no scientist has ever done so so it is not scientifically proven that lions are king of beasts okay why is it unzoological? Because the people who actually study animals, lions, so zoologists, which are scientists, have never done so. So no scientist no scientist has ever done so. ever called lions the king okay that is why also worth one mark Moving on with our D. Oops, forgot to read these ones here before, but it's okay. No problem. Still in, re in relation to question, question, f sorry, to paragraph three. In what way, according to the writer, did Albert show the first morning that he did not have an ounce of pity in his character? Okay. So no ounce of pity. We saw it here. I soon realized these virtues certainly did not fit Albert. Uh, so virtues being that lions are praised in writings for kindness, wisdom, and courage. And the writer says he did not have an ounce of pity in his character on that very first morning. So he goes on to explain why there's no pity. On the very first morning I was walking past his enclosure, Albert had concealed himself in a thick bed of grass and he mercilessly, so mercilessly also is synonym for zero pity, so no pity, mercilessly, he jumped out against the bars with a hair raising roar. So hair raising means frightening, like he shocked me, He, I was scared, right? So. To answer the question, in what way, according to the writer, did Albert show on the first morning that he did not have an ounce of pity? So here we say,
Albert here said and jumped out. Jumped out against the bars. Oops. Sorry, forgot against, jumped out. Jumped out against the bars and roared at the writer. Okay, so that's what he did. You can also add, if you want to be very descriptive, the word here, hair raising roar. Okay, roared at the writer. Let's move on to E. The writer says that Albert's eyes were full of ferocious amusement at my panic. Okay, at the writer's panic. Describe in your own words Albert's reaction to the writer's panic. Here are worth two marks. So it means that in, these, in this statement, we have two little things that we're looking for. Okay, full of ferocious, so Albert's eyes were full of ferocious amusement at the writer's panic. Okay, so we have ferocious amusement, ferocious and amusement. So how do we describe these two in our own words? And it was said, do, 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 yes, right here, if you want the full sentence. He did, a, he did this again on the second day, after which he squatted on his haunches and fixed me with eyes full of ferocious amusement. Okay, so we're looking for most likely here, the marks are going to come from ferocious and amusement. So what does ferocious mean? When you say someone is ferocious, ferocious synonyms, you have definitely wild. Wild, you also have savage. You also have a mean. So ferocious is mean, cruel. Another word close to savage, vicious, vicious, savage, and mean. Okay, so you can use that for ferocious, so any synonyms. And then amusement, when you find something amusing, it means that you're also, uh, you're, you find it funny, right? It's funny, it makes you laugh. So what was Albert doing? His eyes, they were full of evilness. So word of the day, again, cynical, right? <laughs> it's dark, so very dark amusement pretty cynical okay so first point the reaction so he had two reactions a very dark amusement okay so here Albert's eyes Actually, let's say Albert. Mm, how could we put this? Albert gave the writer a savage. vicious look and then and so he gave his eyes there was a vicious savage look and he was also 
laughing what was he laughing at though he wasn't laughing at what he just did he didn't albert didn't find the fact that he was jumping uh funny what he found funny was the panic of the writer so those two reactions savage look and also albert found The writer's panic. Funny. Okay, funny. There we go. Okay, now moving on to, sorry, question six related to paragraph four. We are looking to answer both these questions. First one, why did Joe and the writer place a huge piece of meat inside the cage? Give one word from the paragraph which shows that the procedure for trapping a lion always followed the same pattern. Okay, let's go ahead with paragraph four. Once a week, we had to move Albert so that we could enter the enclosure and clean it. Built into the side of the enclosure was a large iron barred cage accessed by two sliding doors, one into the enclosure and one to the outside world. Looking radiantly innocent, we would place a huge piece of meat inside the cage where Albert could both see and smell it. Then, closing the outer door, we would raise the inner door to the enclosure so that Albert could get to the meat while we stood chatting outside as if there was nothing further from our minds than trapping a lion. In defense of Albert's intelligence, he, has, he was not fooled by any of this for a minute, but it had become a sort of ritual which had to be respected or the whole procedure would become disorganized. Okay, so in this paragraph, we see that once a week, Albert, sorry, once a week, Joe and the writer had to trap Albert into a little cage, the smaller cage than his main area so that they could actually clean his main area, clean his, clean his enclosure. All right, and they had to make sure that Albert was safely aside so that when they go in, Albert wouldn't attack them and kill them, okay? So what they did is they would put a piece of meat in the smaller cage, they would bring Albert's attention to that meat, and then Albert would go into the cage. So we have the smaller cage here, we have the big area over here, they put the meat here, Albert goes from here, to the smaller cage, they close the cage, they go in, they clean, and then they let Albert back out, okay? And they did that once a week, so they say that it eventually became obvious to Albert that they were doing that, so he, Albert was not fooled, and they, had, they were under the impression that Albert always knew exactly what was going on. Okay, so going back to our question, why did Joe and the writer place a huge piece of meat? The reason why. Okay, inside the cage. And here, it's a little bit tricky because in the sense that you have to really pay attention to the question. They're asking why did they put a, meat, a piece of meat inside the cage? The answer here is very simple. It's because they wanted Albert to go into the cage, okay? It's not because, you might think that is because they want to clean his enclosure, but th that's going too deep. So very direct, why would they put a piece of meat inside the cage? Is so that Albert would be tempted to go inside. So they, and then they could uh, close it, okay? So a specific word is to lure to lure Albert okay but 
here I believe that they might be lenient and if you say to clean his enclosure that can work as well but here it says we would place a huge we would have to move Albert okay into a smaller cage and then they say we would put a huge piece of meat inside the cage so it was too lure to lure okay to lure Albert inside the cage this is good enough of an answer but if you want to add it you want to sorry you want to add on to the answer you can say inside the cage to then be able to clean his enclosure okay that's your answer worth one mark okay so one step closer to that a plus Give one word from the paragraph which shows that the procedure for trapping a lion always followed the same pattern. Here I personally instantly noticed it. Line 36, but it had become a sort of ritual. Ritual. Ritual means something that you, it has to do with religion, you do it all the time. It's a, it's a ritual. You just constantly frequently have to do that or maybe it's once a year but a ritual means that it's it's a commitment you do it quite often so one word followed by the same pattern so it has a pattern the word is ritual okay another point closer to your a plus Paragraph 5, question 7. In what two ways was the performance to trap the lion doubly ridiculous? Let's find out by reading paragraph 5, which is our last paragraph. While Albert studied the meat from a distance, Okay, so we're still talking about getting him to go into that little cage. We would speak in childish voices to him, saying, Would you like some meat, Albert? Or probably it sounded more like this. Would you like some meat, Albert? Or that weird baby voice that people do to their animals. We would repeat this endlessly and the whole performance was doubly ridiculous by the facts, so here's our explanation, that Albert understood none of it. So here Albert understood none of it. The theory was that Albert would ob oblige, obligingly, yes, obligingly go into the cage to eat the meat. While he feasted, we cleaned the enclosure in safety. If Albert wasn't taken in by any of our tricks after 10 minutes, we tried another ruse. We would saunter off down the path. But occasionally, Albert would make a sudden dash into the cage, grab his trophy, and escape, and escape with it before we had time to slam the door on him. When that happened, we just had to wait till the next day when Albert would be hungry again. Okay, so back to our question, in what two ways was the performance to trap the lion doubly ridiculous, okay? And to spot the first way, we should we should look before, so it would be before he, the writer says doubly ridiculous, okay? Because what's in, what comes before is ridiculous, and then 
what makes it doubly ridiculous so adding on to the ridiculousness that was already mentioned it's the fact that albert understood none of it and if you ask yourself a question what did albert not understand he did not understand the childish voices that they were speaking to him using right so it's already ridiculous that two people are probably adults are saying to a lion oh do you want some meat and talking to the lion like he's a baby and then what makes it even more ridiculous is that the lion has absolutely no idea what you're saying okay so in what two ways so we have his name is joel yes need to remember the other guy's name yes it is Joe so Joe and running out of ink and the writer spoke to Albert in child goodness Childish voices. Okay, and second thing, Albert didn't understand anything. that was said right Albert doesn't understand English he's a lion okay so worth two marks for the two ways so speaking to Albert in childish voices and also Albert does not understand anything so it's pretty shameful okay Moving on to question eight. Question eight is related to the whole passage. So everything, we'll have to do a little bit of, of licking through the passage, but that's fine. For each of the words or phrases below, circle the letter A, B, C, or D, which has the same meaning that the word or phrase has in the passage. A, uneasiness used in line two line two which is here i was determined to show no outward sign of uneasiness when i was giving given this assignment okay so remember when the writer started the job the writer was told that they would have to work with the lion and the writer was really scared okay and they did not they did not want to show outward sign of uneasiness okay so let's remember this this sentence here determined to show no outward sign of uneasiness and let's replace uneasiness with these words here so to show why don't we do this here let's see if it works out okay to show no outward sign of guilt that definitely does not make sense because guilt means that you regret something but that's not the case here to show no outward sign of terror that's definitely a contender so to show uneasiness being scared it's close but maybe not all the way there let's see to show no outward sign of reluctance so reluctance means i don't want to do the job okay that too is it's uh it's a little bit close but it's not not all the way there anxiety okay i was determined to show no outward sign of anxiety 
when I was given the assignment. So I would be leaning more towards terror or anxiety. Terror means just being scared. Anxiety means you're definitely not comfortable, okay? Uneasiness, anxiety, I think they're very close compared to the other options that we have. So in this case, we would go with anxiety and I'm just going to use a different color here because my ink is just dying, so anxiety. Withering in line 10. Okay. Albert merely gave us a withering look. Withering. Tired. Let's see. Albert. Albert merely gave us a, a tired look. <laughs> okay, I think that one's definitely not it. Uncertain. Albert merely gave us a uncertain look. Doesn't sound right either. Scornful. Albert merely gave us a scornful look. Scornful meaning scornful meaning that he was, you know, angry like reprimanding, right? Oh, why why are you doing this? Why are you remember this is about Joe uh, taking his stick and what was he doing here? It says rattled a stick. So he was just going against the bars with a stick. All right, so scornful, that does make sense. Let's just look at the last option. We have dying, which already I could tell would not be it. So Albert merely gave us a dying look. It just doesn't make sense, okay? I don't think that the line would be dying by just hearing noise. So process of elimination, scornful it is. Vied. Okay. Here it is. Ever since someone in a moment of unzoological enthusiasm called it the king of beasts, writers have vied with each other to produce evidence of the yes, to produce evidence of the lion's right to this title. So writers have vied with each other. Okay. Here, competed, oops, competed, right here. Writers have competed with each other to produce evidence of the lion's right to this title. Yes, makes sense worked with writers have worked with each other to produce evidence of the lion's right to this title okay raced with each other or agreed with each other okay so if you are not sure of the definition of vide then you would definitely be tempted to go with any of the five of the following definite of the following uh, synonyms so replacements for that word okay but if you look at what does vide mean or if you know which would be important in this case because i think that just feeling it out may be kind of complicated okay but Vied, where are we? Yes, vied with each other. So vied in itself, it doesn't mean it, you're not in agreement. So it means that they were actually competing. So when you're vying for something, you're fighting for that thing, okay? So you're, you're fighting to be on, on top and you're, you're fighting to 
to uh, claim whatever the subject is. Okay, so vied with each other means that they were actually in disagreement, not disagreement, but they were, they weren't working with each other. They did not agree with each other. Raced definitely could be a contender, but compete is definitely more appropriate. So we'll go with that. Okay, obligingly, line 41. The theory was that Albert would obligingly go into the cage to eat the meat. All right, obligingly politely okay so he would politely go into the cage I don't think so helpfully he would helpfully go into the cage based on how they described him to be an animal and vicious and uh, Albert roaring and jumping at the workers, I don't think that he would be polite, neither helpful. Peacefully, I don't think so either. He would peacefully go. He would wonderfully, wonderfully go. No. So if I don't know what obligingly means, then you might be confused at which option to go with. But the meaning of obligingly actually means that you you give in so it's from your from your own will okay so helpfully is actually the correct option that he would helpfully so he would he's obliged to do it he would just follow follow through and just do it to cooperate okay so when you're obliged to something you cooperate so you're being helpful okay so I hope that makes sense. I think that for these two here, it would definitely be good to know the definitions. You can't really just go through process of an elimination. It's a, these two are a little bit tricky, okay? Which is why I have word of the day, so that you can expand your vocabulary and you could be more comfortable with these kinds of questions. Last part here, line 44, we have trophy. Let's see what's going on. But occasionally, Albert would make a sudden dash into the cage, grab his trophy, and escape. So this is when he goes in a cage, gets the meat, and then he gets he goes back out to his enclosure before they, they trap him. Okay, so souvenir, definitely not. Metal, mm, okay, prize, yep, sounds like it. Cup, no. So process of elimination, D is gone, A is gone. We have metal and we have prize. I think more appropriate would definitely be prize because metal may be too specific, but a trophy is a prize, okay? Trophy and a medal are not the same, prize. Is more appropriate we go with C okay and there you go for question eight all right bear with me we have one more question to go through one more it asks us to reread paragraph two and five which contain sentences telling us about a what Joe did, and B, what Joe and the writer did. Give the meaning of each sentence as it is used in the passage, the effect of each sentence as it is used in the passage. So first thing that we have, A, he fixed me with an intense stare, line 11. Going from 10, he did not look fierce and wild to me, but Joe must have read my thoughts because he fixed me with an intense stare. Okay? 
and that's right before he says, listen to me, the lion looks tame, but he is not, okay? Fix me with an intense stare. So what is an intense stare? Intense stare is when you're, when you're staring at someone, a good synonym for that is when you're glaring. So you're glaring, okay? Or you can say that he, using a synonym of intense stare, so he also, you could say, fierce, fiercely looked at the writer, he gazed at the writer, he glared, okay? So here I'll use glare, but you can say also looked very, and that was not intensely, you can't use intensely, severely. Okay, he looks severely, so. Oops, I'll add Joe here. Joe looked severely. Gosh, this ink, severely. The writer, or you can say, shorter version. At the writer, and what effect does that give? Okay, so if you're glaring at someone, you're looking at them very intensely before you say something. And in this case, he says, now you listen to me, young man. He may look tame, but he is not. Understand? And he says, understand? So he really wants his message to be taken seriously. Okay. Joe wants to wants the writer to take his message very seriously. Okay, you stare at he stared at uh he stared at the writer. And he says, listen, he is tame, but he may look tame, but he's not. So he definitely wants to be taken seriously. Now here we have line 43. We would saunter off down the path. Let's go find that. Last paragraph. 43 is over here. We would saunter off down the path, okay? If Albert wasn't taken by any of our tricks, the tricks to put the meat and get him into the cage, after 10 minutes, we tried another ruse. So they tried another trick. We would saunter off down the path, okay? Saunter. Let's see. How I can explain this. So saunter, right? Saunter means very chill. Okay, we would saunter. If I'm if I'm sauntering down the hall of a school or I'm sauntering on the beach, it means you're just, you know, you're you're not in a hurry. You're just hanging out, just you know, as if nothing's going on. You're just sauntering off. Okay, you're, you're chill. So the meaning is they were relaxed. I don't think you can write chill. <laughs> it might be too informal. Okay, so they were walking They were walking off 
in a relaxed in a relaxed manner okay uh, another thing that you can say instead of saying chill chill I guess you could say casual okay they were walking off in a casual so you could say relaxed or casual your choice and what effect does that give right so remember it's another ruse the ruse is to just walk chill and be chill and then cool and just go down the path right so they were trying to have an effect on albert okay and what were they trying to do they were trying to make albert think that they were going away right they were pretending to walk away but they really weren't going away um so the effect they wanted albert oops to think that they were going away okay they wanted albert to think that they were going away so okay fine we're just going to walk down and leave you alone and then they would just run back and try to <laughs> capture him into that cage all right, friends, there we have it. That was question nine, which is our last question for this paper. Just trying to find the cover. Yes, here it is. That is it for paper two. O-level English, reading October, November, 2019, variant 2-1. Okay, I really do hope that this helped you. If it did help you in any way, leave a thumbs up. If you have any questions, again, if you have any comments, you want me to, to know something or uh, improve in something, let me know down below in the comments, okay? And I look forward to solving more of these papers for you. And I hope that you have an amazing day or a night, depending on where you are located in the world. And I will see you in the next video.